Head off on the first floor. Okay. Uh, we've got butterfly conservation here, glad to have them along again. And we've got these swallowtail and bird wing butterfly trucks. Uh, I'll quickly go over what's going to happen. Every hour, 10 a.m. onwards, um, there's going to be a swallowtail guided walk. So you guys will be on the first guided tour. If you don't see them the first time round, just come on the next tour or a later one at 11 or 12 or 1, so on. And um, hopefully, we'll get some good views. Within the tent, there'll be talks on a rolling basis throughout the day, lots of talks on swallowtail ecology, various projects around the world. So we're now going to head off on the first swallowtail walk. It's only a, of a five minute walk and we'll get to the swallowtail site. Also at 11.30, it's all on board. Um, one o'clock, two o'clock and three o'clock, there's general wildlife walks around the reserve. We'll see Norfolk hawkers, scarce chasers, cuckoos, harriers, all the good stuff as well. So do join us for them. So if you're ready, we shall set off. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it perfectly, but you know what it's like with photographers. Once they've got it once, they want it again and again. <laughs> I just saw that angle where it dipped down, and it, I think we've just got it on it. Yeah. That's the distinction. They look the same, even the caterpillars look the same, they broadly speaking behave the same, 
Um, but it's where they actually lay their eggs. And that's not that unusual when you look at a number of species that are on the edge of their distribution. If you, if you look at not just butterflies but many other species that if they're on their northern edge they're much fussier about how they live and what food plant and, and, and the conditions in which they live whereas if they're in the heart of their range where everything is quite good for them, they're much fuss less fussy about any individual element. Uh, a person in Fiji, a colleague in Fiji, with a photograph of a butterfly, a solitaire butterfly, say, asking me if I could identify it, please. In Fiji, there's actually only one species of swallowtail, so it didn't stretch my knowledge very far. Uh, I only had to check that one, and guess what? It wasn't that one. So we had the possibility of a new species, which is incredible. That is the, that is the actual photograph. Um, a lot of people were a bit sceptical and thought this had been photoshopped or, um, or it had been released from somewhere, uh, you know, whatever. Um, somehow it got there or some sort of scam. It was not. And the following year, working with Operation Wallacea, which is a UK trust that sends students out to interesting parts of the world, and um, associate Richard Markham, associate entomologist, went out to work with the students. Um, the butterfly was uh, discovered and collected just enough specimens <coughs> to be described. It's now being described Papilio natiwa, the natiwa swallowtail, from the natiwa peninsula in uh, um, Levu. Absolutely amazing that a butterfly as, as bright and as obvious as that could have remained completely undiscovered in a place like Fiji, which actually has been very well studied over quite some centuries. So a fantastic success story. And this summer we've got another, not this guy, another chap, Clive Huggins, <coughs> who's out there right now, in fact, doing some more ecological studies, uh, which we need to have because we need to plan for conservation of, of this species, because already collectors, I'm sorry to say, are going over there and creating a certain amount of trouble. They're not likely to have a major impact, but you know, we need to make sure this thing is conserved correctly in a proper park, which is not that easy in Fiji because all the land is community owned. It's a bit complicated. Thank you.